Hi! This video is made following the Sunstone mining trip up to Plush, Oregon. I'm going to share with you several different types of sunstone because that's actually a broad term. Sunstone itself is what's called a chatoyant feldspar. I'm going to show you what chatoyancy is. Since I've gotten into the rock and geology world, I've accumulated quite a lot of different beautiful specimens of material, so I'm actually able to show you a piece of Australian sunstone, Tanzanian sunstone, in various stages of completion from the rough raw to ready to go into a piece, and let's see, Tanzanian, uh, several different types of it, also Oregon sunstone, which is what I was mining. If you are interested in visiting a sunstone mine, there are three outside of the city of Plush, Oregon. There's either the Dust Devil Mine, the Let's see, Double Eagle, Dust Devil, and Spectrum. I personally have not been to the Double Eagle. They are closed for this season. I have been to the Dust Devil, and I'm going to show you a few specimens that came from the Spectrum mines. There's uh, different ways to go about obtaining sunstones. You can go and park at the public BLM public collection free area. You can camp there for two weeks. Really nice place show you some of the champagne you'd expect to find there but without further ado let me introduce you to the varieties of sunstones to be found in the world and a few other nice examples of chatoyan feldspars oh and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out and ask i've been learning quite a bit about sunstones in the last year and i know some people who are quite knowledgeable about carving and faceting just mining you know general sunstone info. So please reach out if you have questions. I'd also like to hear what you think of the various types of stones. I personally really enjoy all of them. Love to hear your thoughts. All right, I'm going to begin by introducing several types of chatoyant feldspar. All the sunstones you're going to see as well as the other labradorite, tigerite, and moonstone are feldspars. And I'll show you what chatoyancy is. That is that marvelous optical illusion factor that certain stones have, where, take this piece of labradorite. It doesn't appear to be particularly spectacular, but you flash it about, catches the light, and you're able to see golds and blues, dark blue, light blue, purple, green, so many different tones in it sort of a banding pattern. This is one of the remarkable characteristics of the Labradorite. Great stone. I love it. It's found all over the world. New Zealand. Let's see. Canada. New Zealand. British. No, not British Columbia. The coast of Labrador. Finland, I believe. America. Um, parts of Asia. Let's take a look at another lovely piece of labradorite. This one has quite a lot of gold in it. So chatoyancy is this ability to change as you maneuver it around in the light. These are both very nice specimens and I'm excited to use them in some pieces. I think silver would probably complement best. And cutting labradorite is tricky. It's often, well, you have to know what you're doing, and you have to really be able to. It's called following the flash. If you know what you're doing, and you have a nice piece to work with, you cut it correctly, you're going to have color popping out at you. Any way you turn it, it's going to be very bright, very brilliant. But if you don't have as nice of a piece to work with, or you're not as skilled of a cutter, you might wind up with a little heart like this, where... Most of it is honestly not the highest grade. You have to turn it just, just so. It has actually wonderful rainbow color in it. You just have to turn it correctly to find it. See, it's there, but unless it's angled just right, you're not going to see it. So that is the challenge of cutting Labradorite. Many of you will likely be familiar with Moonstone. Again. It doesn't appear to be terribly remarkable until you angle it correctly and then you'll find this opalescent 
beautiful blue sort of wandering blue purple fairy magic wandering effect another form of chatoyant phone spar now you are familiar with tiger eye this one is extremely popular it's supposed to bring i think good luck and uh, assist those dealing with conquering addictions there's some metaphysical properties it's supposed to hold but on the bottom this little heart is pretty uh, traditional gold and brown you find this in Asia primarily it's very common to find little children vending tiger eye bead bracelets over in Thailand got quite a lot when I was over there and if you turn this lovely piece of tiger eye around the back side has elements of blue that's called hawksbill it is an element that you'll find heavily in the Peter site stone, which I probably should have brought out an example to include Peter sites and other Chatoyant Feldspar. So, Tiger Eye, I'm going to introduce you to a red Tiger Eye Cabochon next. This one has really incredible flash. So, you don't have it angled just so. Well, the back side appears rather dark. Turn it to catch the light, and the whole thing kind of comes to life. Those bands of chatoyancy. So now we're going to move on to the sunstones. It's about the nicest darn specimen I have. He came from Spectrum Mine several years ago, and he has been worked. He emerged out of the lava rock as a rather monstrous gnarly looking kind of yellow rock with a bit of color visible inside he has been sanded on all sides to remove some of that yellow encrusting it's called champagne sunstone matrix and i'm going to show you the color that's inside if you look here by my thumb you see a little green you see some red you see kind of an orange band and then you see some more red well that orange band if you angle it correctly, is called Copper Schiller. It is extremely reflective, it's the brightest possible copper, and it runs through sunstones only found in Oregon. No other part of the world produces the particular combination of color and Schiller that you have in Oregon. It's the state stone comes from a really small region. Somewhat, the Oregon sunstone is a bit like Tanzanite or Larimar. Really rare because the mines themselves are just this limited little area. Now, perhaps in a hundred years, as we explore and dig, we'll find more. But you have kind of a clear yellow surrounding copper shiller. Let me focus in. I'm sorry for losing the focus. Copper Schiller and blood red with a little bit of green. Again, this is an extremely nice, nice specimen. Normally, if you were to go out and mine, let's focus in, I'll show you more of what you might expect to find. But this guy's a great example of just about everything. The little guys do not have Schiller in them. They're examples of rough, unworked in any way. Just pick it up out of the lava bed. Inside this fellow, he's pretty much clear, but there's a little blob of red hidden inside, surrounded by a tiny band of green. Now, if he was cut and faceted properly, that would really help to bring out the color as it is you can see it's there. He's not terribly huge. You can see it a little better from the back. That is a good example of color. Same thing here. These ones aspire to be as the large, lovely piece that has been lovingly worked, which I just showed you. I'm going to bring a few examples of Schiller up. My little pile of older acquisition. I'm borrowing this from a friend to make this video. These ones will probably be turning into jewelry at some point soon. This is an example of champagne, which is the name for the yellowish coating. It's not a coating, it's the sunstone as well, but the colorless sunstone. Basically it can come anywhere between white to a rather 
dark yellow. However, there's a really bright, bright piece of Schiller inside. You see it whenever I angle this guy to catch the light, it illuminates. Unless you angle Schiller correctly, it's going to be invisible because it runs in these very thin mineral bands through the golden host. And you only find this in intense volcanic lava areas, kind of like obsidian. So that is exactly what Schiller is. Yeah, this is the nicest piece of Schiller I've got. It's right there at the surface and so bright. Another, this actually has Schiller running in two directions. One, you kind of see when you angle it, angle this very rough, cracked, not particularly nice piece of champagne around. You'll see one piece that's up and down. And this little guy, you have to kind of turn around. And, alright, he's, he's kind of evading photography, but he runs side to side. So, a bit interesting there. This big guy's primarily clear. He's what's called champagne. And you can see that there is some Schiller in there. It's a thin band. If you turn it sideways, you can't even see it. It's just this thin little wisp of metallic in there. See? You, you cannot see it. It's an optical illusion. It looks like there's absolutely nothing there. Just clear. And it's a nice, you know, it's a nice shape, nice big stone. Hasn't been worked at all. But you turn it, catch the light, and wow, there it is. So that is Champagne with Schiller. I, I found, I was quite excited. He doesn't have a lot of color in him, he just has a little Schiller, but he's very clear. Does have a little bit of a crack, but he's a big guy. And there's that Schiller. Can't wait to turn him into something. I need to sand him a little bit. I mean, he's you know, fresh out of the lava field. He needs a little, little work, but wonderful raw material. So if you were to go out to Plush and collect at the public area, I'll show you what you'd be likely to find. These pieces that we just saw all came from the uh, Spectrum or the Dust Devil Mine. This first piece has been sanded a little bit. It's very clear. There's absolutely no color interruption, no shiller. It is just extremely clear Oregon sunstone. That is what you'd find above ground at the surface. Now, if you were to dig down 10, 20 feet, you very likely might find red or the shiller or even green. It's called color sunstone. But at the surface, or maybe the top 10 feet, that's about it. Now this guy has been sanded. This is a little uh, friend of mine's attempt at making, I don't know, like a bottle shape. Just experimenting with shapes. There's a bit of shiller in the bottom, you can see it, but primarily clear. This is what you'd find at the public area. I have one more little piece. It's pretty cool. The back, let's focus in. The back has been etched slightly, so as you turn it, you have, there's no color inside, there's no shiller, but you have a bit of an optical illusion. I believe it would be set facing forwards, and you would just have that little interesting sense of movement created by a little Zorro. Oh, would this be? A little Zorro carving in the back. So, kind of cool. Again, champagne. This is all Oregon sunstone. Feldspar from a plush area. Volcanic. Beautiful area to visit. Collect. Do some mining. Now let's move on to Australian sunstone. I'm afraid this is quite extremely expensive. I only have a few small specimens. They were acquired over the winter in quartzite. But I will show you. Let me set these guys down. to take a look at the Australian sunstone. So I'm going to show you some of the distinctive features. This comes from one small area of Australia. It's actually outrageously expensive stuff. Inside you'll find sort of multicolored pink, green, blue, yellow, little confetti fragments sort of embedded in the white sunstone matrix. But one of the absolutely distinctive features of the Australian sunstone is black lines. 
Oopsie. Midst all the shimmer and shine. Black lines and triangles. Um, this piece doesn't have any really clear triangles, but a lot of the good multi-hue confetti did a different piece. Here's a good example. You see black lines. You see a little triangle in the corner. If you're looking at that, you know that it is without a doubt Australian sunstone. And you turn him correctly. Rainbow color shoots out. I don't have a great deal of this because unfortunately it is quite expensive, but a few small pieces which are fantastic for illustration. Let's see. Oh, do five or six total. Now let's take a look at a few different types of Tanzanian sunstone. To begin, it also, like our lovely friend the Australian sunstone, has confetti in it. This is entirely natural. It has not been treated, modified. It's been sanded a little bit, so it's not, you know, not so rough. Some of the clear shiller has been removed, but this is from Tanzania. It's extremely bright. Now, the Tanzanian tends to run more on the orange-pink scale, but just insane, insanely bright natural stone. A few other examples all from the same area. This little guy down here, the bottom, he, just a moment, get my focus right. Down here at the bottom, he's quite a bit clearer than his mates. He doesn't have as strong a concentration of the magnetite, which creates that sheen. But you turn him correctly. Oh, there you can see he has some shiller inside and some confetti. Not as bright as his friends, but still a very nice little piece. And this guy has been worked on a lapidary machine. Let's see, block of ice. He has been worked. And it's a really nice kind of well, well-rounded, even scattering of the magnetite. Again, very pink, very orange. Really good little examples of Tanzanian sunstone. I have quite a bit of rough Tanzanian. This has been partially, partially worked. The front has been sanded a bit, so you can really see what's inside. It's just blinging nice color. Um, it's been sanded on this side as well, so you have a bit of a um, partial box there. Now the back. This is what raw sunstone looks like. Oops, I forgot to Apologize for the camera issues. I have a new camera and I'm still getting used to it. This is what the raw what the raw would look like. Partially worked, partially rough. It's not the clear, you can still see the confetti in there, it's not the clear champagne, it's not the white like the Australian, it's a pinkish variety, Tanzanian. A lot of this, I bought it for I think like a dollar a gram down in Quartzite. There's a lot of, a lot of color play in there, but it's completely rough little slabs, so hopefully one of my friends will be able to turn this into some nice somewhat i don't really know what's in there but more than happy to give it a little time on a lapidary wheel and see what it has to say what's inside this guy i bought as a solo piece he did not come with you know, a handful of friends from the same mine he's just a little solo guy from one of my rock purchases down in quartzite last year and it has a little bit, I'm assuming it's Tanzanian, it's just a sunstone, it has a little bit of the white confetti presentation. Let's focus, focus in on this. You can see that there's some kind of line presentations down at the base. But it's primarily kind of 
clear, translucent with little hints of hints of shimmer and shine. I'm gonna show you some other. I don't entirely know what the variety of sunstone is other than Africa somewhere. This first almost makes me think of fiber optic glass, which is a man-made stone, but it is a stone. There's some banding at the bottom. There's really no confetti play, just a great deal of reflectivity. And it's it's very bright. It's a nice piece. There's not a whole lot of distinctive color or pattern, but I mean, it's a very nice stone. That's a sunstone. I'm sure it's African or Asian or something. Maybe Mexican. Down here you have this came from the same the same purchase probably different qualities being cut. This one has a little bit of patterning, definite sheen to it, and you actually see it's, it's patterning best from the back. You can see that there's some color play and some striations in there. Let's pick up another one. Oh, sorry. This guy has some darkening to him on the edges. Some other mineral kind of crept in. It's a bit of a grayish tone, and probably not the highest quality, but it still has a really amazing color, color play. So, another sunstone. This guy is quite large. He is a very good example of the Chatoyan Sea that optical reflective capacity I made this bracelet as the first of several little sunstone experiments that I'm excited to do. I was practicing a new method of setting the stone and he was the right size. So we have here different types of sunstone. I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and well now you'll be able to recognize sunstone and chatoined feldspars from around the world.